Hello, and welcome to the final screencast of the Mix and Flow of Matter unit, Pressure. So how can we measure pressure, and what is pressure? Pressure is defined as the amount of force being applied to a given area. We calculate pressure by using the following formula. Pressure is equal to force divided by area. Pressure is represented by the letter P, force by the letter F, and area by the letter A. The units for pressure are in pascals. The force is always in newtons, and the area is always in square meters. The units for pascals come from a French mathematician from the 1600s who explored fluids in very in-depth discovery. Handsome guy, hey? This is Blaise Pascal. Now normally we use uh, kilopascals since pascals are so incredibly small. Actually one pascal is the amount of force it takes to your desk to push up on your book. So you don't notice it too much. Okay. Uh, here are some other examples of pressure that you might be, uh, have heard of. Uh, air pressure at sea level, so the amount of uh, weight, so to speak, or the pressure of air as it pushed down on you is 101.3 kilopascals. Okay. The amount of pressure of, uh, uh, within the jaws of an ant are 0 0.005 kilopascal. So you're looking at five pascals. Very, very little bit of force, but still for a little creature, that's quite a bit of force. And on the other side, a ballet dancer standing on the toes of one foot exerts pressure of 2,500 kilopascals on the floor. That's a lot of pressure. Calculating pressure looks like this. We have pressure in an area of 36 square meters, and the force is 60 newtons, 80 newtons, and 120 newtons. So let's quickly figure out what that would look like. Okay, calculating pressure. So when you're underwater, you're obviously under pressure. That's right, under pressure. And the pressure of the air is different from the pressure of the water. Actually, the entire Earth's atmosphere, one atmosphere as they call it, is equal to the first 33 feet underwater. So you can see that the entire atmosphere, all thousands and thousands and thousands of, of air above us is equal to only the first 33 feet of water when we go under. So as we go deeper, there's a lot of pressure. Now, all that pressure uh, is really felt when you begin to dive deeply. And people who dive deeply are very aware that they are under pressure. Now, uh, as you travel deeper, the pressure increases simply because there's, a, there's more weight of water above you. Therefore, it wants to crush you. Okay? Now, Pascal's law, which deals with pressure, states that within an enclosed fluid, okay, so uh, in a system that is closed, you can't add any more or take anything out because everything's kind of locked together. An enclosed fluid transits pressure equally in all directions, okay? It's got to be closed though. Now, where do you see this? Well, in hydraulic systems. This is a system that uses liquids to move objects. Basic idea, you apply a force to one point, and that force is transmitted to another point using an incompressible fluid. It's not normally water, but it's something else. Okay, earlier uh, we did talk about hydraulic systems, and if you apply a force, okay, the fluid transmits equally through both areas. Therefore, we see an equal amount of, uh, of the piston or an equal amount of this uh, object being moved on either side. If we change the size of one of the pistons in the hydraulics or one of the, the tops, okay, we apply less force here. <coughs> we apply less force here, but more force uh, is pushed up on. On the other side, we push down with more force here, and it pushes up with less. This side pushes down faster, with the other side raising with more force, but slower. Okay. Another example of a hydraulic system is a bobcat. And if you've ever seen a bobcat uh, take apart a concrete slab using its hydraulic jacks, you can see here and here, these are hydraulic pistons. And inside of them is a fluid and it allows the, the jack or the bobcat to move its load very easily and very quickly because the fluid inside is incompressible. And therefore, when it pushes out those pistons, the pistons move with great, great force. Okay. Same with the hydraulic uh, bobcat jack. 
uh, moves quite quickly with a lot of force to drill through concrete because it uses a hydraulic system and an incompressible fluid. And it does work in a very, very quick and very, very fast manner, uh, more so than, let's say, a science teacher trying to take apart his backyard with a small little sledgehammer. This works much faster. Okay. You also see large hydraulic systems in rides or in uh, uh, amusement parks. And here, one example, uh, this massive hydraulic piston pushing up the entire ride, pushing up the entire uh, weight of the system, including riders, because it's an incompressible fluid inside. Uh, other examples of a hydraulic jack, a hydraulic system, a car jack, a heavy equipment machinery you mentioned. And if you could think of another one, uh, let me know, because I'm always curious to hear what other types of systems that you think make hydraulic devices. Now, pneumatic devices would be the opposite, so to speak. They use air, which is compressible, to uh, operate an object, such as a jackhammer, a nail gun, as depicted here, air brakes, or a dentist drill. All of these would use air, to force or speed up uh, something to make it work more efficiently and to get uh, uh, the nail, for example, in this nail gun fired out faster because it shoots it out with, uh, with air under pressure. Okay, So that's a very quick rundown of pressure and what it means for fluids. Remember that liquids and gases are fluids. Uh, so here's, here's pressure. Terrible.